We've all been told recycling is key to fighting plastic pollution. But what if the system itself is flawed? A shocking new report claims plastic producers have known for decades that most plastics are not actually recyclable. Join us as we explore the shocking allegations against plastic producers and the potential impact on our environment. For over three decades, manufacturers of plastic have been aware that recycling is not a viable solution for economically or technically managing plastic waste. Despite this knowledge, a recent report reveals that they have continued to endorse recycling. According to the report by the Center for Climate Integrity or CCI, a fossil fuel accountability advocacy group, the companies have been deceptive. Richard Wiles, the president of CCI, emphasized the need to hold these companies accountable for the harm they have caused. Plastic, derived from oil and gas, presents significant challenges for recycling due to its intricate sorting requirements. The vast array of chemically distinct plastic types makes recycling them together impractical, further escalating the already expensive process. Additionally, the material degrades with each reuse, limiting its potential to be reused only once or twice. The report reveals that the industry has been aware of these significant challenges for decades but concealed this information in its marketing campaigns. The research relies on both previous investigations and newly uncovered internal documents that highlight the extensive nature of this prolonged campaign. Industry insiders, spanning several decades, have described plastic recycling as uneconomical, asserted it cannot be considered a permanent solid waste solution, and acknowledged that it cannot go on indefinitely, according to the revelations. The authors argue that the evidence indicates potential legal violations by oil and petrochemical companies, as well as their trade associations, in terms of misleading marketing and pollution, violating laws designed to protect the public. In the 1950s, plastic producers strategically adopted disposability to ensure a continuously expanding market for their products. According to Davis Allen, investigative researcher at the CCI and the lead author of the report, the focus on single-use plastics was intentional, anticipating a cycle of repeated consumer purchases. During a 1956 industry conference, the Society of the Plastics Industry, now known as the Plastics Industry Association, advised producers to concentrate on low cost, big volume, expendability, and encouraged materials to end up in the garbage wagon. In response to the report, Matt Seaholm, president and CEO of the Plastics Industry Association, criticized groups like CCI for opting for political attacks rather than collaborative solutions. Despite the industry's earlier promotion of easy disposal methods like landfills and incineration, in the 1980s, as municipalities considered bans on plastic products, the industry shifted its narrative to emphasize recycling as a new solution. The report reveals that the plastic industry has been well aware for an extended period that recycling plastics is neither economically nor practically feasible. An internal 1986 report from the Vinyl Institute, a trade association, explicitly stated that recycling cannot be considered a permanent solid waste solution to plastics, as it merely prolongs the time until an item is disposed of. Despite this knowledge, in 1984, the Society of the Plastics Industry established the Plastics Recycling Foundation, bringing together petrochemical companies and bottlers. Subsequently, the industry launched a campaign emphasizing its commitment to recycling. In 1988, the trade group introduced the widely recognized chasing arrow symbol for recyclable plastic, using it on packaging. Even though experts have long criticized the symbol as highly misleading, echoing concerns recently voiced by federal regulators. In 1985, the Society of the Plastics Industry set up a plastics recycling research center at Rutgers University, one year after the passage of a mandatory recycling law in New Jersey. Meanwhile, in 1988, the Council for Solid Waste Solutions initiated a recycling pilot project in St. Paul, Minnesota, following the city council's decision to ban plastic polyesterine. During the early 1990s, 
Another industry group ran ads in Ladies Home Journal proclaiming that a bottle can come back as a bottle over and over again. However, behind closed doors, industry leaders consistently maintained that recycling was not a genuine solution. In 1994, a representative from Eastman Chemicals spoke at an industry conference about the need for proper plastic recycling infrastructure, but expressed skepticism about recycling solving the solid waste issue. The same year, an Exxon employee told staffers at the American Plastics Council that they were committed to the activities of plastic recycling but not necessarily the results. While the report does not allege specific legal violations by the companies, it suggests potential breaches of public nuisance, racketeering, and consumer fraud protections, according to Eliza Joel, a co-author and attorney. The report contends that the industry's misconduct persists today, citing recent promotion of chemical recycling by industry lobbying groups. This process breaks down plastic polymers into tiny molecules to produce new plastics, synthetic fuels, and other products. But the report argues that it creates pollution and is more energy-intensive than traditional plastic recycling. Despite these revelations, Matt Seaholm, president and CEO of the Plastics Industry Association, dismisses the report, stating that it was created by an activist anti-recycling organization. Seaholm asserts that the report relies on outdated information and false claims, though he does not specify which claims are considered outdated or false. The release of the report coincides with heightened public scrutiny on the plastic industry and recycling. Two years ago, California's Attorney General Rob Bonta initiated a public investigation into fossil fuel and petrochemical producers, focusing on their involvement in causing and worsening the global plastics pollution crisis. A significant event that added momentum to the scrutiny was a toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, last February. This incident spurred the movement advocating for a ban on vinyl chloride, a known carcinogen used in plastic production. Subsequently, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, announced a health review of the chemical, marking the initial step toward a potential ban. In 2023, New York State took legal action against PepsiCo, alleging that the company's single-use plastics violated public nuisance laws and accusing it of misleading consumers regarding the efficacy of recycling. The public's increasing concern about the climate impact of plastic production and disposal contributing to 3.4% of global greenhouse gas emissions, has prompted legal action. Numerous cities and states have sued the oil industry in recent years, accusing them of concealing the dangers of the climate crisis. Richard Wiles, president of the Center for Climate Integrity, or CCI, suggests that taking the oil and petrochemical industries to court for knowingly deceiving the people could compel them to reassess their business models. Wiles emphasizes the importance of holding companies accountable as the first step toward addressing the problem. Judith Enk, a former EPA regional administrator and founder of the advocacy group Beyond Plastics, praises the report as very solid and recommends it to every attorney general and the Federal Trade Commission. Brian Frosch, former attorney general for Maryland, notes that the report provides evidence typically expected in the later stages of a lawsuit. He expresses confidence that, based on the information in CCI's report, an attorney general could comfortably push for an investigation and subsequent legal action. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, click the next one shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks for watching.